Hi fellow Turners and uh, welcome to New Zealand and season 4, episode 1 uh, of my series on using Glaive and uh, what I'm going to focus on first this season is Backlash and it's something that bothers a lot of uh, new Glaive users um, and it bothers me actually and I found it to be quite helpful to have, to have done some work on correcting the problem but the professional Turners say that uh, there isn't a lot of point in trying to get rid of backlash because you can't get rid of it all for a start and you just need to learn to live with it because it'll always be there. But I've found these, this top hat modification is very easy to do and well worthwhile. I think it's a, a great idea and I really like it. Now the main source of backlash in the cross slide and the compound slide is the bronze nut that uh, rolls along the lead screw this thread inside the cross slide and compound slide are both referred to as lead screws and they are steel threads, uh, Acme type threads and they have running on them a short bronze nut and that's obviously going to be the part that wears out fastest but because this is an unusual thread they're difficult to make and uh, almost impossible to buy replacements and if you can they're very expensive. I'll talk about replacing the nut later in another episode uh, but today we're talking about the backlash from the dial. The dial itself can contribute a lot to backlash. If you look closely, if you grab hold of the handle you can see now and move it backwards and forwards, if you can see a gap opening up beside the dial, that's the problem. That's contributing to backlash. And you can easily correct this by unscrewing the grub screw on the dial itself and pushing the dial towards its support and closing up that gap. And I usually do this by getting a screwdriver behind the, the handle and levering that as firmly as I can against its support and then doing up the grub nut. But that's laborious and for some reason they seem to keep coming loose. Also the reason for having that grub screw on there is supposed to be that you can turn the dial around to zero point when you're doing a particular cut so you know where you're coming back to. And if you do that, each time you do it you cause more backlash unless you do it very carefully. And this separates the two processes. We'll be making a bronze sleeve that goes basically in the place of the dial and then the dial goes over the top. And to do that we'll have to bore out the, the dial to make room for the sleeve. And the dial actually has a recess in the back and we can extend the sleeve to make a top hat shape to fit into that recess. And I actually extended the size of the recess, the depth and the diameter to make a bigger top hat rim because that is a bearing surface, a thrust bearing for the lead screw and the bigger that is I think the slicker it's going to run. This is the end view of the dial after I turned it and placed the bush. The small diameter is 3 eighths of an inch and the external diameter 20 millimeters and the thickness of the hat rim is about 3 millimeters. The reason I made the wall of the sleeve so thick is because it has to accommodate a grub screw which has to be done up quite tight on a shaft to ensure it doesn't slip. The other part of the thrust bearing the part I've been calling the support is made of steel and you can see here it's very scored and it's worthwhile taking that off and facing it off on the lathe obviously. Now removing this part however was to prove to be somewhat difficult. In this image you'll see a grub screw on the top which is pretty obvious. You take that out and I couldn't get that part removed until I climbed underneath the lathe actually got my iPhone camera and looked at the underside and found that in fact there's another screw underneath so if you weren't aware of that you can't get it apart. <laughs> so you can then slip that sleeve out, pop it in the chuck and face it off. Now notice that we've put a grub screw in the side of this thing, it's a 6mm stainless steel grub screw in this um, and the next thing is to assemble it and I suggest putting the handle on but not the dial and using a screwdriver to put some force on the thrust bearing and then tighten up that grub screw. Then you can take the handle off, put the dial over the top, the scrub screw up, put the handle on, tighten the scrub screw and put the little cap on the thread. And it's assembled and ready to go. And I think you'll like this. Oh, one more tip. Originally the grub screw in the dial was just clamping directly onto the uh, bronze bush. Later models apparently had a brass slug in there, so you'd had the grub screw, a spring and the grass slug, and the grass slug pressed on the surface of the bush in this case, or the sleeve top hat, 
and create friction and so that the dial could just be moved around and it would stay where you left it reasonably well and you could experiment with that although I found that I made the dial thinner by having the bushel sleeve inside it and there wasn't much room to put a spring. I did put a, a slug in there which was a piece of 1 8 inch brazing rod cut into a small section to put underneath the grub screw. So you can try that out. Well, hope you enjoy this as much as I did.